everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rhiannon, and today's topic at hand is how do we dress a spell candle? And, um, you know, what are the steps? So this is going to be my walkthrough of how I dress my spell candles. And you don't have to feel like you have to do it any particular way because there's no real wrong or right way. You just kind of have to uh, pick a method and roll with it. So let's get into this. If you guys are new here, I'm Rhiannon. I am a witch and a pagan, and I love to talk about all things magical, mystical, and mysterious here. I love to talk about paganism, the occult, and witchcraft. This is a topic that I'm super excited about because candle magic is one of my more favorite ways of doing any type of spell work. Actually, it is the first thing that I have ever done with spell work. And it's something that I lean on heavily every single time I have something that I want to accomplish. And more often than not, I have a spell candle working in almost any one of my workings, regardless if it's an oil that I'm making, or if it's some type of sachet, or if it's... Even if I'm just bundling herbs, I have a candle going feeling that working, feeling that energy and feeling that intention and supporting that spell. So even if it's not the spell in itself, it, there's always a candle involved with me. It's just kind of how it's always going to be. So before we really get into the actual dressing of the candle, when you think about fire, fire is the element of transformation. Transformation and passion. There is a lot of passion in fire. There is a lot of purification. There is a lot of cleansing when it comes to fire as well. So I feel like it can be useful in a lot of different situations. The element of fire in the tarot deck is actually represented by the suit of wands. It's fast energy. It's coming in quick. It's bringing in manifestations quickly and with a lot of passion. So that's why I use it in almost everything that I do because I want that quick energy. I want it to come now and I don't want to have to wait around. Um, so most of the time I want something to change and I want it to change now and that's why I always add a candle to it because it adds that speed, it adds that heat, it adds that cleansing and purification element, and it also adds the passion element to it. So it really helps things come in very quickly. First off, what do you do when you want to do a candle spell? Well, first off, you want to choose the type of candle that you want to use. I myself like to think about things in terms of the length of spell that I want to do, so I'm not wasting candles as well, and I'm not just having to restart the dressing process over again. So I think about the amount of time that I need to do that working. Is this going to be a small spell where a chime candle is more than enough? Or is it going to be a seven day working or a month long working? Or is this something that I'm going to be working for the entire year every day or every week? So you want to kind of give thought to that first. For myself and my experience, a chime candle doesn't last any longer than about an hour um, unless it's something affected by the working itself where the energies at hand are making things burn quicker or um, burn slower. It depends on that because you will see that as well. You'll have candles where they'll normally have about a, a normal burn time. You'll be able to understand the average of how long like a taper candle burns and all of that and they are meant to burn for a certain amount of time. However, if you get a candle that burns for up to five hours and it's a chime candle. That's something you need to look at in your divination and it's something that you need to look at in your spell work as to why is it taking so long? Is there something that you need to do to adjust? For me, a good rule of thumb that works for me in my correspondence list that I've created and that I've experienced is the larger the candle, the larger the working. And that doesn't have to be the case for anyone other than myself, but for me that is what works in my brain. So a small chime candle is like a small manifestation or a small nudge in the right direction or an energy shift. And a larger taper candle or or like a large like pull-out candle or a seven-day candle is more of 
the working that you would want to do for like a week to a month or even a year long. There are pull-out candles that you can get that are like the seven-day candle. However, they're not uh, poured into the glass. They are molded outside of the glass and placed into the jar so that you can actually pull them out and put herbs on the bottom or you can take them out and carve into them uh, instead of drawing on the glass which I really enjoy myself is I like to draw my sigils into my candles physically with my hands or with a tool implement so for me that's a super good thing that I couldn't live without in my practice so you have to kind of think about the type of energy working that you enjoy do you like to carve into your candles or do you don't care and you could just buy a seven day candle and draw on the glass with like a sharpie marker does it matter to you then there's like figure candles and figure candles are actually a form of sympathetic magic so you could actually use those candles to represent someone or a situation and um they'll be that physical representation in that working so you can do figure candles for relationships or for business or anything like that. The next thing that I like to do is think about my correspondences. A lot of people would probably just grab a candle and then just go and cleanse. But my next step is actually to think about the correspondences and the colors that are involved in it and what energies are going to really play into it because that's really going to help me decide what type of candles I'm going to be using. Am I going to be using a pink candle um, for a passion spell or would I be using like a yellow candle for a career spell like what energy do I want to bring into this working now you don't have to use color uh, I've seen people just use like a white plain candle for all their workings and they use sigils and their intent or petitions to describe what they want in their correspondences and maybe just their herbs but me I like to add the layer on to everything so everything that I do has a meaning behind it and there's always going to be a, a color involved in my workings so after you've chosen that you've chosen your candle you've chosen the color correspondences you thought about what you want to do you need to cleanse your tools so a lot of people don't feel like you need to cleanse your tools all the time and if you made your own candles yourself then maybe you don't need to but I definitely feel like you need to cleanse the tools that you are utilizing so if you're going to be making your own candles you may not need to cleanse your candles however what about the wax where did that come from what about the wicks and the jars that you are using that all has energy that's been built into it from people in the stores or people handling it that are manufacturing these items. So you really want to think about um, the energy that might be attached to it and cleanse that. And you can do it in any way that you'd like. There is the form of knocking where you can knock it out. I do that a lot with my tarot deck. Um, or you can do a smoke cleanse. You can do um, sound energy with bells or um, singing whatever you choose you can just pick a form of cleansing I also like clapping a lot I do that when I'm trying to clear the energy of the room um, before I do a full cleansing and that really helps to like move things up and break it up a lot so you choose your method of cleansing and you want to cleanse it the next thing that you want to do is you can choose to carve into your candle or you can draw on it as well um, on uh, the outside of the glass. So I like to actually carve into my candles and then I like to rub in my herbs into the the, the reservoir of the, the, the carving that I have done. So I'll show you in a picture here or a video. Um, but I like to take my herbs and really like just work it into the sigil so that it takes that shape. Um, I think I've seen Mystic Dylan, he does this with glitter, which is a fabulous idea with color correspondences and getting that shiny energy to be like pulling and magnetizing to you. I really enjoy that idea. Um, but I do that with my, my ground herbs and my 
my spell powder blends that I create for myself. Um, so I rub that in there and then I roll the candle into the herbs all around. I like to use sigils because it really helps to um, connect the candle a little bit more and as the wax is starting to burn down, you're able to activate that sigil and release it into the energy. So it just really helps the working to continue to work um, and really helps to boost things throughout the working. Then you will want to anoint your candle. Now, I've seen a lot of people who think that you have to do it a very certain way, and I don't think that that's true. I feel like you just need to do what works for you. If you feel like just rubbing your candle like this and rubbing that oil into it works for you, good on you, just do it that way. Or if you feel like doing a direction towards you or away from you works for you, then do that as well. For me, I like to think of the wick as myself, so I'll pull down from the wick towards me to attract something, or from the base of the candle up towards the wick away from me to send something away. Um, but I've also been known to just put that oil on there and get the spell done when I'm not too worried about the direction of things. If I'm trying to banish something, or if I'm trying to bind something and I know that the candle is not representing me, I'm not going to really worry about it. But if you are representing a candle of a loved one or for yourself and you really want to be clear, then that's fine. But if you're just trying to like banish some like stagnant energy or some negative energy of some sort and it's very general, you don't really need to like do the directions either. It's it's your choice. And um, I find the more fine the powder is, the better that it's going to stick onto the candle if you're using oils. Myself, I differ a little bit here from a lot of people and I don't like to use oils a whole lot on the candle unless it's like some type of um, seven day candle or a pull out candle. If it's a taper candle or something that it's a standalone candle, um, and I'm putting herbs on it. I actually like to use something sticky and That's just because I want something to stick to me I want something to come towards me or I want to sweeten something for myself. So I like honey or um, molasses or you can use um, Maple syrup <laughs> I'm from Canada. So maple syrup is everywhere and I usually can't eat it all so Anything that you have that is sweet and um, makes sense to you. For myself, I've always worked very closely with Aphrodite and since I started my practice working with her archetype, I've always used honey in my working. So for me, I love honey when it comes to that, but even molasses or maple syrup or anything sticky and sweet, um, I really find helps to adhere the herbs that you want better and you don't have to worry about things falling off and wasting a bunch of herbs that are getting rolled in oil um, just because oil is not a really great sticking agent and it just it doesn't make sense to me to use it on the candles um, I've been known to like just dab maybe a little bit of oil on like the top and um, go from there but I'm, I'm not too worried about oiling up my candle one, it's really hard to get your candle to stick to your plate um, if you're melting the bottom down onto your working plate like I do. And um, I don't really have like a candle holder to hold my like smaller candles. So I do melt the bottom and work it onto my working plate. So it's really hard to do that when um, there's oil everywhere. <laughs> The next thing I do want to cover is just like a small safety thing. When you're working with fire, always be very fire safe and be careful and pay attention to that working. If you need to leave, please snuff out your candles um, and don't leave them burning because that's just going to put that on pause for you and you don't need to leave it burning unintended. Also, do not, <laughs> I do not want to see any of you ever putting undiluted essential oils onto your candles and lighting them. Don't do it. They are not fire safe. They are flammable as all 
hell, okay? So just don't do it. It's not safe. These are highly concentrated oils and don't ever put them on your skin directly when they're not diluted, please. Yes, some of them can be okay for some people, but they're extremely highly potent essential oils that are concentrated. So don't put them onto your skin directly unless they're properly diluted. And do not put them on your candles. I've seen this all over TikTok. It's not safe. You can burn yourself. You can get a massive like f like oil burn. You can get f uh, flames all up your arm. You can catch your hair on fire. If you're working with flames, please put your hair up. And always make sure that you have some type of fire extinguisher near you. I keep one in my working room most of the time when I'm working with flame. So if you choose to use oils and you don't know what type of oil to use, I use olive oil when I do use oils. And that one's pretty universal. You can kind of think about the type of correspondence the oil has in itself. And olive oil was used a lot in a lot of rituals throughout the ages. So it was actually first used in magical workings and blessings and in oil lamps and all of that so it's a really great abundant resource and it it can draw in money and all of that it's a very like wealthy oil i use that one in a lot of my like money workings so choose the type of oil that you want to work with or you can even like anoint it with like moon water or sun water or you can even like do like an herbal infusion and do like flower water infusion and anoint your candles or your spell workings with that it doesn't have to be some type of like oil you can do water as well and that's totally fine and i find it's a little cleaner as well and then the last thing you want to do is roll them in your herb i just kind of like slap it on i don't really care which way and then once your candle is fully dressed, you're done and you're ready to start your working. And that's just the beginning of it. That's just getting the candle dressed and ready. And yeah, it's part of the ritual, but there's so much more to it. There's so much more to reading the candle wax. There's so much more to reading the flame and the smoke and understanding what's going on in your working as you're working the candle. It, it's more than just a lighting a candle and then your manifestation is going to happen. You have to divine through your candle and understand what's happening. What is spirit trying to tell you while you're doing your working? Like, is there something that you need to adjust? Is there something you need to do to support your candle? Do you have to put another candle next to it with a different intention? Do you have to do a cut and clear? Do you have to do an, any number of things? You really have to kind of like focus on the candle and read the flame and read the smoke and read the wax after to understand did my spell actually work do i have to do another one to counteract it and this is the only way you can really guarantee your working is going to manifest it is by working your spell your spell working is more than just a one-off and done i've seen this so much on tiktok and it's so annoying it's really a working in itself you have to work the spell you have to do extra things with it it's not just a candle and then all of a sudden you're going to get everything that you've ever wanted you have to work the energies and work with energies to understand uh, how to pull things towards you so with that little mini ted talk done i just want to say thank you guys so much for joining me in this video if you're very curious on the next part of this little mini series on how to read the flames, on how to read the candle wax, and how to re read the smoke when you are divining your spell working, and how to adjust and pivot in your spell working, how to use spell candles in general. Make sure you check out my next video next week. It's coming out next Friday, and I will see you guys in the next one. Make sure if you're not subscribed yet, Subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't mess out when I post a video and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!